You might think you know the difference between a Scottish and Irish accent, and you might think you know what they're saying, but we'll just see about that. The weather's never good, they always stay in the borders with the mists on the Yodens. You're gonna hear nine fascinating accents and dialects from Scotland and Ireland, but that does not mean that you'll know what they're saying or where they are from. You get a point for guessing the country and double points for figuring out the area. So listen carefully and write your guesses in the comments, but you have to be fast. You ready? As I rat mayor and was moving among folk interested in poetry, then they become aware of that. And, and I find that they quite lick at it, and that was really quite strange. I thought they would find it awful queer. This accent has some pretty interesting roots. It came by way of Norn, an extinct North Germanic language spoken in this area up until the 18th century. Did you hear how she pronounced her th sounds? This is very distinctive in this area, replacing the with a d or a t. Those with an ear for Nordic languages will be able to pick up on its influence pretty quickly. Here's a bit of a poem that describes that area. I'm reckon pretty silly. We are preen and dark and wand, are poking after smizzlins, at the Ipstands, at the sand. What a beautiful place. Have you guessed whether it's Ireland or Scotland yet? You may be surprised to learn that this country, despite being relatively small, has 10 distinct regional dialects, which are often broken down into sub dialects. It's getting complicated. And the poems? Well, they've been described by some as magical and soothing, soft-spoken but powerful, and I couldn't agree more. Here is another sample of a poem. This time the topic is about dialects versus languages. The passion we had, come we nin to ourselves, come we bal sun for our bosie into the heavens, come we lay a word the love upon in another, come we done a butter when narrow definition. And while we're on the subject of accents versus Dialects. I think it might be a good time to add a disclaimer of my own. There is a fine line between accents and dialects in the places in this video, and many of them actually have both. This place is no exception. You can see both here. If you could um, let me keen what you want, Meru, uh, then, yeah, to make it better for you and to help me, I would love to hear it. In case this is my first one, I just want to make it a, a pity poem um, and a fun one in this book. I like old smocks, treed burr and aften torn, flat stout and heemly like, and brawly worn. I like old smocks, and I'm aid up light to hide them, for tired feet to wiggle, their toes at them. I like old smocks, though they hae now adorning, their aid up find put on in the morning. What an absolute delight. In case you didn't catch it, she was talking about old smocks, or Slippers. If you haven't figured it out yet, we are in beautiful Shetland in Scotland. It's an archipelago, a group of small islands stretching across the sea between Norway and the UK. No wonder there's a strong Scandinavian heritage still thriving here. Because it's so tucked away and isolated, there are plenty of opportunities for really fun words to stick around. Here are a couple of my favourites. The word is spaggy. Spaggy is the exact pain you feel after too much anaerobic exercise when you have a buildup of lactic acid in your muscles and you get that ick. I'm awfully spaggied. It's something I would say if I exercised. I love the word uh, Haley Puckles because you can almost feel them, like a puckle being like a pretty bar, a hail that comes down through the sky and it conjures up this idea of them bouncing if they were, maybe bouncing off the car or bouncing off the windowsill. The bears would open the curtains and say, Mom, look at the Haley Puckles. If you're looking for fun ways to beef up your vocabulary, you can add these phrases to your arsenal. Speaking of Arsenal, I've got a story coming up about two feuding accents and a loaf of bread. But first, another mystery to solve. I'm trying to find something wrong with your plan. I was looking around town for ages, looking for the perfect bike for you. Well, that's a girl's bike. It's got the, the fanny dip thing. I don't want that. The fanny want... dip thing, but it's got three gears. Now, I have to tell you right away that this can be a tough accent to nail down. Depending on where you live, the words being used and the pronunciation can vary greatly. It really depends on where you're from. If you come from 50 kilometers to the west, uh -huh. you get a fierce thick accent. Just going, how's it going there? No, like, uh -huh. Do you know, it'll be one thing. And if you're from the if if you're from the east, how's it going, lad? What are you up to? You know, so it actually it changes. changes within within 40, 50 kilometers. Oh my God. So the phrases then will change will change. So the phrases that I know may not be the phrases that the teacher in the next room would know. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It, it could be, but that makes it fun. Fun is one way to describe it. At least they understand each other. The history of this accent is an intriguing one. It's partly attributed to one person in particular, a certain saint called Finn. I suppose you could say that the accent was started by Saint Finbar. 
God bless and preserve the man. When he built a little church on the hill up there, when he came down in the 6th century. The Danes came a couple of centuries later to add a Scandinavian flair, but then add in a sprinkle of Welsh, Norman, a bit of English, and just a touch of French Huguenots, and what do you get? You get an accent with a delightful sing-songy rhythm, and that's what makes it so easy to identify. Hello, how's it going? I'm calling about uh, the advertisement on the buy and sell. Yeah, the sky hooks. Have you still got them? Ah, oh, that's deadly, man. Sing-songy, we've heard that before. Easy to understand. Not always. You may need to keep an eye on the subtitles for this next one. Sean, come here to me there. Story, hair la. Be pure white and keep sketch notes because they're not able if shades come around the corner over there la. Well, I've probably given you enough information already, but in case you need it, here is another clue. If you really want to be sure of this accent, look out for the excessive use of the word boy at the end of every single sentence. Everything in general mm -hmm. uh, ends with boy. We always say boy. How's it going, boy? Ah, Not so about a boy. Have you figured it out, boy? Well, we are in none other than Cork, Ireland. Interestingly enough, many people in Ireland say that Cork is the true capital of Ireland. I have no opinion. It's just a fire in the belly. <laughs> you know, you can't, uh, you won't keep a cork man down, you know? Do you think that Cork is the true capital of Ireland? And if so, why do you think so? Oh, a million percent, because we are just the best people. We're very friendly and everything. Yeah, that's what I take anyway. You've got some pretty convincing arguments there. If you'd like to try out your cork accent, why not give some of these words a try? Just don't forget to make it sing-songy, you know? And while you're at it, go ahead and like this video and subscribe, boy. Oh, boy. I better move on, boy. We've got a bony library where you will find Ahe. So on a Saturday afternoon, you can come down the road to Pitodre and see the Dandy Dons play Fitba and come and see our famous scurries, because we've got hundreds of them and they're absolutely massive. Now this is another case of dialect meat accent. It's a bit difficult to find where one ends and the other begins. And I my family live within about a half mile radius of each other. They are still up there. So I grew up in Bucky. I left when I was 18. My sister and brother were there till they were 18, or actually my sister was there until our 30s. After Queen Elizabeth passed, it came to light that she could actually speak this very unique dialect, and unique it is. It has irregular verbs and has been described as having ragged tones and cadences. Some who speak this dialect sometimes feel a little bit self-conscious when speaking and feel the need to change their accents when speaking with others. Ian was Dr. Ken Morris, and he got a Robert Gordon from his posh. And Robbie Shepard was on the other side, and he got to Robert Gordon, but he wasn't a posh. And I just thought, uh -huh. <laughs> God, because I didn't want Dr. Ken Morris thinking it was a gape, and I didn't want to Robbie Shepard to think I was up myself. So I didn't say anything. Now, personally for me, these accents and dialects are really quite endearing. They're absolutely fascinating. I see them as a glimpse into history and culture. But many dialects like this are disappearing. Any ideas yet where this may be? Well, here is a weather forecast that might help. It's a bit hard at mid -mar, but it could be war. On the other hand, it's strong, you can see for your gun. There's fog at Drum Clog, and fog's a bit of a footer at Peter Cotter. OK, maybe that wasn't much of a clue. The weather's like that all over the UK and Ireland, but in case you haven't figured it out, this is Doric, found in Aberdeen, Scotland. Doric is sometimes counted among Scotland's other languages, English, Gaelic, and Scots. It's officially protected by the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages. It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Teaching it in schools was once forbidden, but many are putting forth new efforts to keep it alive. Want to learn a bit of Doric for yourself? Well, check out these phrases here. But don't get too comfortable, because the next accent is no wee buns. Boys are dear, I say this all the time, when you've been jarred by something, or you've received some news, you go, boys are dear. All cards on the table with this one. This is a big area, and I do recognize that there are many variations of this accent, maybe 50 shades or more, but bear with me. You'll have this one figured out in no time. I'm not ready to figure it out. One of the telltale features of this accent is that the letter R is always pronounced. So for those of us who aren't as accustomed to the rhotic R, this is a chance for us to embrace our inner pirate. R. Are you? Pride of your country. How much of this can you understand? Oh yeah, uh, well he's fallen down the stairs and he's not really breathing, so I guess I'm gonna need like an ambulance. Some say it sounds a bit like an American accent. Anyone agree? I'm not seeing it personally, but there are definitely some similarities there, but I can verify that this is not always the case. You recognize this guy? Okay, here's how I grew up speaking. 
oh, how you doing, Conan? Is it all right? Everything's all right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Liam Neeson. I, I, I'm from Ballymena County, and, I'm, and I talk like this. All right, I am pretty sure I gave it away with that clue. We are in none other than Northern Ireland, or Northern Ireland, as they like to call it in my favourite <laughs> posh British accent. Northern Ireland is known for basically me <laughs> and uh, Liam Neeson. If you're looking to learn some local lingo, check out these fantastic Northern Irish phrases. This computer is banjax. It's taken two minutes for every website to load. Our holiday to Crete in August was absolutely baser. They never stop talking. It completely does my head in. Here are a few more choice words to keep in mind. Now, before we move on, let me warn you, this next accent involves ghosts. It's the most haunted uh, city in the world. Okay, now I am intrigued. This is the most haunted city in the world, according to the locals. It has stories of haunted castles, pubs, and other places. Stories scary enough to keep even the bravest up at night. So basically, uh, when the Black Plague was wiping out most of Europe, uh, managed to survive a bit by just being utterly, utterly ruthless in how they dealt with it because they couldn't come up with any medicine. Oof, glad I wasn't there during the Black Plague. But do ghosts really exist here? When it comes to ghosts, I'm afraid I don't know um, where they rank on the PKE scale. I don't know what level of ectoplasm they may have. And yes, I was a Ghostbusters fan as a child. This city was actually built over some very old bridges. The arches of these bridges were divided up into vaults. There are scores of these vaults that are still being discovered. It started running in the sub basement, started digging everything out. So then I found a tunnel which led into the first of the vaults. Which made me realise there was more and more vaults. I dropped the floor level here, lifted a slab here. As you can see, I found this big hole. There's a couple of tunnels going off to the left there and the right. And I have it on good authority that these vaults just might also be haunted. In recent years, people have reported a veritable avalanche of ghostly encounters. Visitors have had their hair pulled, clothes grabbed, and spines tingled. TV appearances aside, many visitors report seeing a particular spirit, sometimes called Mr. Boots. People often hear him tramping over the cobbles, whispering for them to get out, or if they fail to get out, pelting them with small bits of masonry. Okay, enough ghost stories for today, let's move on. This area has an accent for sure, but also a dialect. See, influenced by Norse, it's one of the longest standing dialects in the country. Robert Louis Stevenson, author of Treasure Island, reportedly used it in his writings. You live in the same area. It's ah. like a heavy area. Nice. Nah, I'm not religious. This young lady thinks her accent is not very strong. <laughs> What do you think? I can put it on if I want today, but I just can't be bothered half of the time because it's just like it's playing up. Whereas I was watching a whole lot of uh, American TV, so I've really picked up a wee bit of like American slang in me all my words. So strong accent or not, haunted or not, we are in, of course, Edinburgh in Scotland, named Old Reeky, which means Old Smoky. The nickname came from thick smoke that came from coal fires from the tenements in the old town. And these words here are straight from the Edinburgh dialect. You never know when they may come in handy. If you're done with ghost stories and want something a little less you know, scary, I've got something free for you to try. Now, you, you might know by now that the reason I bring you these fun stories about accents and so forth is because I actually teach languages using Stories. Stories are the most basic form of human communication. We've been tapping into this magic for thousands of years, and even if you take away books forever, people will keep telling stories, true ones, made up ones. We love our stories for learning new things, and I've left you something completely free in the description below. It's called the Story Learning Kit. It will show you exactly how you can use stories to learn languages yourself. Free things are cool, aren't they? So go and grab your copy, link in the description. And now, I think it's time to tell that feuding accent story. My name's Tom, we're standing outside uh, Paradise on the third round of a European Cup tie to qualify for the Challenge League uh, with my Polish friend and I've, I've known him for about half an hour and I feel as if I've known him all my life. <laughs> this town is one half of a rivalry that dates back to the 17th century and scholars believe that this nearly 400 year old argument started over bread. That's right bread. Here's how it went down. In 1656 the town council decided that their bread was not up to stand. The local bakers just weren't doing their job. A neighbouring town decided to offer a solution. They would make bread for them. Nice, right? Apparently not. See, these guys took it as an insult that another town said they could bake bread better than they could. Well, the rest, as they say, 
is history. Believe it or not, this competition between cities is alive and well today. But what are the people here actually like? We like a bit of fun. We're real, we're full of integrity. And we take everybody as we find them. That is an admirable attitude. But what do they say to people that, you know, really bother them? One bile your heat is another one and it's just like, you're talking rubbish or you're doing my head in, driving me mad. Away and bile your heat, like, away and boil your head, essentially. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> Bit harsh there, isn't it? I'll give you a hint, but it's not going to help. This accent has influence from the West Central Scots, but it also has strong influences from Irish English. Try this sentence on for size. I took the dog out this morning and the wee bism came back covered in glower. We are in none other than Glasgow in Scotland, otherwise known as the Dear Green Place. And who is their rival? Well, it's Edinburgh, of course. Old Reeky, not sure who has the better bread today. Maybe I'll take a train and go and find out, but this looks like a strong contender to me. I think it's time to learn some Glaswegian words. Check these out. But just watch out for that Glasgow kiss if you know what's good for you. Nobody wins with a head, bud. He was talking about um, his dog is old and it's getting scaldy. So it's the same thing, second person, second person plural. Um, yous or years. Uh, you know, okay. what, did they, what the English people say? <laughs> oh, you lot, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? This city was once a Scandinavian city. There's that Norse influence again, but it was also influenced by early Middle English and a bit of Norman French. Can you hear any of that here? Generalisation. I think they're fine, but I can't say more. They said it all right, because I have a game record behind it, so... <laughs> no problem, as good as any other one. Anyway. <laughs> Here's the tricky thing about this accent. The city itself is divided into north and south, both with their own version of the accent. The northern side is more working class, while the southern is considered more posh. Can you tell which one this might be? Well, what is my favourite place? And that's a hard one. I don't know. Uh, Why? Sides where we're from. Oh, that's nice, that's near the airport. Yeah, no, I like Holt. The next example is often what is considered to be the quintessential Irish accent. What do you think? So we were here first. Were the Vikings here first? He is right, the Vikings were there first, but the accent, well, I think it's pretty safe to say that's not how a Viking would sound. We are in none other than Dublin, Ireland, the other capital of Ireland. You have to come to Ireland to really just Sort of get yourself involved in the atmosphere. Yeah. And if you want to take him up on his challenge to come to Ireland, these phrases from Dublin just might come in handy. And if you're interested in really upping your Irish game, well, you should take a look at my book of Irish short stories. Super proud of this one. I love the cover as well. It will open your eyes to a whole new world. All right, tally up your scores and buckle up. It's time for a speed round. Two more accents, but they're really quick. Let's see what you got. Had a few chances in the last couple of games at the back post and the keepers pulled off a couple of saves and um, I was lucky enough today that I went in in the end and thank God we won. I think so, you know, I like to think I've come on a lot since the start of the season but um, still have a lot to learn and, you know, playing with these players every week can always... But at the end of the day, if we sit back and do nothing, you know, what's, we're just, we're handing it over to somebody else. You know, as ourselves, being active, taking parts, being here, hearing what's going on, hopefully we can make a difference. Well, did you figure it out? We are in Donegal in Ireland. Here's something interesting. English is not the first language of many people from Donegal. They often speak Ulster Irish, which is a slight variation of Gaelic. Here's an example. Well, Pasig Madiwalia, Ken Creek of Viren Scale. In Ulster Irish, it would be Madri with an R in it. But the rest is history. Everybody knows what happened. And if you're ever planning on taking a trip to Donegal, here are a few words that will get you up to speed. Ready for the last one? Journey War. I want to touch her, my prisoner, on my sail too. <laughs> <laughs> and the Irish man, he was wild, I, I don't know what they were saying, you know. And he said, and the, the, the his fence, and all and all, my man, he, he was with me, we out, in the, no glass, we had a spittle. And now we, we put a stone in, and the man, he said, der, der Stein muss draußen bleiben. And there you have it. The dialect of Caithness was influenced by both Gaelic and Norn. It has a beautiful, familiar ring to it. Check out these words from the Caithness dialect that are sure to put a smile on your face. But let me ask you this, which variety of English is your favourite? Something I haven't even mentioned? Maybe it's something from further afield? Let me know in the comments, and if you'd like to keep the game going, check out this next accent video, which is sure to make you think.